Tracheal intubation in the critically ill adult patient. The British Journal of Anaesthesia 2017 has provided us with some guidance. We've done human factors, we've done plan A, we've done plan B, C, now we're on to plan D. We're going to have to cut that neck. Are you ready to do that? Let's find out what they recommend. So plan A hasn't worked, plan B and C hasn't worked, you've gone on to plan D, you're going to have to cut this patient's neck. Are you ready to do this? So assuming now you've declared a plan D, you said we've got to have an emergency front of neck airway. We've got no option, we can't get into this patient's airway any other way. Whilst you're setting up for this, you need to think about the, re the, the remediable factors. So things that you can remedy that might make the whole process work for you. So you need to think about the equipment. So is there a failure of the oxygen? Can you check your oxygen uh, status? Is it connected to oxygen? Is the oxygen working? Is the tubing connected how it should be? Is there a blocked breathing system? Is there something in there? Is there a blocked HME, for example? Is there a blocked airway device? And then finally, do you have a poor mass seal can you adjust it to get a better seal can you use a two-handed technique then there's the airway itself have you got excessive cricoid pressure could that be eased off a little bit might that make the process a little bit easier is there some laryngeal spasm is there a foreign body is there a regurgitated material that you could suction out that might be making the process difficult is there blood in there for example or is there a severe bronchospasm all of these things might be remedied which might make it possible for you to establish an airway you could be doing all this while all the equipment is being gotten ready you're probably going to have to use it but let's exclude everything else first so the document talks about priming for phona front of neck access and this is where the set should be brought to the bedside after one failed intubation attempt now i would argue and i think probably they would agree that the phona set should be in your airway trolley anyway which should already be at your bedside so it should be there already you should open the set after one failed face mask or subglottic airway attempt so you should want that open now get it open i think we may well need this and there should be immediate use of it once you declare that i can't intubate i can't oxygenate you then need to move on and get on and do it so now we're going to get on and do it how are we going to do it you have to ask yourself the first question is there a palpable membrane can i feel the cricothyroid membrane if you can so you're doing the handshake of the larynx you're identifying the cricothyroid membrane if you can identify it you're going to get your scalpel and you're going to make an incision straight in there a horizontal incision into the cricothyroid membrane once you've cut into it and not gone too far you're then going to turn your blade so the sharp edge is pointing down to the feet once you're in there you leave the blade in hold the blade pull across slightly which will make a triangular cutting point a triangular hole you're then going to get your bougie which you're going to introduce from the side bougie in once it's in then you're going to go in the same direction as the airway put the bougie down get the tube over the bougie introduce the tube just so it goes in past the black marker as you would as if you were going through the cords once it's through there obviously bougie out inflate the cuff uh, and then hopefully you've established an airway if you can't palpate the cricothyroid membrane then the only difference in the procedure is that you're going to be making a much longer incision so you're going from the still notch all the way up and then you're going to have to do a blunt dissection with your fingers until hopefully then you can palpate the cricothyroid membrane once you've done that the process is exactly the same so again blade in horizontal sharp edge down to the feet pull across bougie in horizontally tube over bougie out inflate and hopefully that's your airway what's definitely not recommended anymore is high pressure jet ventilation through a narrow cannula ttjv they definitely don't recommend this anymore device insertion and subsequent ventilation are both prone to failure and nap4 identified high failure with this process as well so ttjv is not recommended there's also lots of generic seldinger technique pieces of equipment out there as well once again they don't recommend the use of those they very much go for the for the method that i've already described um, and they make that quite obvious in the document so okay let's assume that your front of neck access has worked you need to confirm it once again with waveform catenography you're probably going to need to have 
have a look with a fiber optic scope or at least a chest x-ray and you're probably going to get yourself ready to put a more formal airway so an ET tube or do a more formal tracheostomy to make this a secure airway. So that's plan D. Well done, you got there. Plan D is probably the scariest of all the stages you're going to go through. But actually, if you look at the video on the Difficult Airway Society, and I put the link here and I put the link down below, which is a fabulous video, shows exactly how to do it. I think the whole process, while still a bit scary, is probably less scary. I would suggest if you're never going to do this yourself and you're always going to watch somebody do it because you're not in a position to be doing it yourself, I still think you need to be familiar with this process. Process, uh, because if you're familiar with it you're going to be very very much more helpful to the very scared person who's having to do it at the head end of the bed. So that's it, the tracheal guidelines in the British Journal of Anesthesia 2017. I've gone through the human factors A, B, C and now D, so all those plans are covered. They're all in videos on this channel so please go and have a look at them. If you find it useful subscribe to my channel or make any comments down below.